Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and today's video is another episode of our e-commerce mini series. Now for the first video of this part in the series, I showed you guys how to design your custom product page. However, I am not very good at code. So we're bringing on Ethan from the Wix Wiz YouTube channel. Of course, I'm gonna leave the link to his channel in the description below. I really ask that you guys go subscribe to his channel. He is a Velo genius. But Ethan is gonna be here for the next several episodes in this series to help bring that design that I made to life. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass the baton over to Ethan and he's gonna show you how it's done. Okay, so now that we've completed the basics of our custom product page, including connecting the various elements to their actual product data and setting up the options dropdowns and selection tags so that we can go ahead and choose the different options for a product, we are finally ready to add our product to cart. Okay, using the add to cart button. And the way we're gonna be doing this is by using this API right over here. And this is an API that's part of the Wix stores front end API and specifically the cart section of that API. And we're gonna be using this function right over here called add products, which is used in order to add products to the cart using code. And I highly recommend taking a peek at the documentation before using it, just so you can understand its various aspects and how it might be able to be customized to your specific use cases. Uh, once you've understood that, so I'm gonna head now uh, into the code and show you how to actually implement it. Okay, so now over here inside of the Wix IDE, I currently have the code for our custom product page open. And the first step is going to be to import the API into our page code. And you can do that here either above or below the import that we already have. Uh, so let me start off by doing that. And I'm going to do import cart from Wix stores back uh, front end, not back end, but front end. Okay. And then once we have this cart imported over here, we're going to want to call the add products method within the on click for our add to cart button. So I'm gonna head back here into our on ready function. And right here on the bottom, after all of the populating the page, I'm going to add an event listener to our add to cart button. And I'm gonna do that by selecting it. So $W and add to cart button. And as I said, I'm gonna be adding an on click event listener. And basically here, we're gonna have a callback function. So a function that's going to run whenever we click on that button. And what we want to happen here is that we want to call the cart method, uh, sorry, call cart dot add products. Uh, but this add products needs some additional information in order to add the products to cart, different information about the products that we want to add and we can find the information that we need inside of the API documentation. So if I go over here to add to products, you can see here that the parameters that we need are essentially an array, okay? We're only gonna be passing in one product at a time, but you have the option to pass in more than one if you want to, uh, but it still needs to be formatted as an array even if you're passing in only one. And this array is going to include the product ID, it's going to include the quantity and it's going to include the options, specifically the choices that we chose inside of our dropdowns. So let me go ahead and add that into our code. So I'm going to go back here to the IDE and right above where we declare cart here, I'm going to create a new variable called, let's call it um, product info. And this is going to include all the things that we just saw inside of the documentation. So it's going to include our product ID. It's going to include our quantity. And it's going to include our options with the choices nested inside. So choices. And now let's talk about how we're going to get each one of these things. So the product ID we can get from right up here. Uh, we have our product as a global variable. So the product ID over here will just be product.id. And the quantity is going to come from our quantity input. So let me just show you that here on the in the editor. 
so if we take a look here at the bottom, so we have a quantity input, and that's where we're going to get our quantity from. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in here as well. So essentially, we just need to get the value of our quantity quanti quantity input dot value. And for our choices, uh, luckily, when we designed our drop downs that select the different options, uh, we stored all the info regarding those selected options up here in this global variable. We had done it for uh, getting the specific variant information, but this is also going to help us for adding the product to cart. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass these selected options in as the choices. So let's do that. Selected options. And now that we're done setting up this product info, I'm going to go ahead and pass it here to add products. But don't forget that this needs to be passed in an array. So I'm going to put the product info over here. So essentially, we're passing in an array with just one item. And I see that I'm already getting some kind of error here. So let me take a look and see what that is. Let's see, type product any strings. No, that's not the add to cart item. The types of property quantity are incompatible. Type string is not assignable to the number. Okay, so that's an important note there. Uh, and by the way, you can know this in advance without making a mistake uh, by checking out the documentation. And you can see here that for each of the different fields that we need to include uh, inside of the parameter, there is a type. So here we product ID, we can see is a string, but quantity is number. Uh, but you know, if you make a mistake and then fix it, it's no biggie either. Uh, and the way we're going to deal with this is that we're going to take this value that we have here, uh, which comes back as a string initially from the input. And I'm just going to wrap it here inside of this number which will convert it into a number value. OK, and you can see here now that our error has gone away. Uh, so we're ready to test this. Before we do, I just want to store whatever comes back from our cart.addProducts inside of a variable. And I'm going to call it updated cart. And this is going to be a wait because this is an asynchronous action over here. And this um, this function, this callback function over here is also going to need to be asynchronous. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this all in a try catch. So let me do that right over here. And this is a way that we can catch errors from promises inside of asynchronous functions. So I'm just going to put this all over there. And I'm going to say here that if we have an error, so console.log error. Okay. And I'm also going to add one last log here to log the updated cart. So console.log updated cart and updated cart. Awesome. So I'm feeling pretty good about the code. Uh, let me just go ahead and format it. Okay, it seems to have been pretty formatted to begin with. And now we can go ahead and test. So I'm going to go back to the editor. I'm going to publish the site. And I'm going to head over to our live site in order to run a few tests. Okay, so here we are on the live site. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place an order for this product. Uh, I'm going to add it to cart and see if everything is working. So let's go ahead and select some options. So I'll do lavender and brown. And I'll go ahead and I'll change the quantity here to two. And I will go ahead and add to cart. And here we got back the updated cart. OK, and let's see if there are any line items inside of the updated cart. And I'll zoom in here so you can see. So here we have one line item in our cart with this current product. OK, and if I head over to the cart page and I just give it a refresh here. Then you can see that we have added the product to the cart and we've added it also with those specific options that we wanted and we've added it with the quantity that we want. OK, so we've successfully added our product to cart. And now I'm going to talk about some additional things that we might want to do while we're adding to cart. 
such as indicating to the user that it's been added to cart or opening the mini cart. So one typical action that we might want to take after a user has added something to the cart is to show the mini cart. And the mini cart is like a small sidebar. If you're familiar with Wix, then you should be very familiar, or at least Wix stores, then you should be very familiar with the mini cart. And we want to show it to kind of indicate to the user that something has been added to the cart and also to allow them quick navigation to the cart if they decide to check out. And here we have a pretty good example of it from Wix here inside of the documentation. Uh, and they also show an example where we only open it if we're in desktop uh, or we don't open it in mobile. Uh, and that's something that I've heard um, other uh, users wanting as well. So just I'm not going to use that in our implementation, but if you do want to only include it for one of the devices uh, or screen size or something like that, then you can use uh, something called form factor and create a condition which will only open the mini cart in that specific form factor or won't open it in certain form factors. Uh, I'm just going to do a basic implementation where we open the mini cart after we have added the products to cart. And that's done using this cart.showminicart. So let me go ahead and add that in. So I'm going to go back here to our IDE. And right here, after we uh, get back the updated cart, so that means if we reach this point in the code, we know that the cart has been updated successfully. Uh, and at that point, I'm going to want to open the mini cart. So I'm just going to write here cart.showminicart. And if you only wanted to show it, let's say for a certain amount of time, then you could also set a timeout and then hide the mini cart after a short while. So let's say, for example, after two seconds, I could also hide mini cart, cart dot hide mini cart. And of course, this is just an example. Um, you may want to just leave the mini cart until the user closes the mini cart or something along those lines. It's really up to you and the user experience that you want to provide. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to publish these changes. Okay, so here I am on the live site and let's try this out. So I'm going to just select some options again and put in a quantity and add to cart. And boom. There's our mini cart and two seconds later it goes away uh, as we programmed. And I want to highlight a super important detail here um, that had me stumped for quite a few minutes here in between these two segments is the fact that the mini cart will only open if you have the native Wix cart icon element on your website. Uh, so if you don't have this and let me just zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about here. This cart right over here, the native Wix cart, if you don't have this icon, the API does not work. Um, you may be able to hide it or put it behind something. Like I'm not saying that you actually have to use this icon uh, on your site, but it has to be there. It has to be there for it to work. So if it's not working and you're like pulling your hair out and you don't know why, then that is most likely why. Um, so that's one thing that you might want to do um, after you add to cart. And let's head back to the IDE and I'm going to show you two more things that you might want to do after somebody adds a product to the cart. Okay, so here we are back in the IDE and I'm going to show you two additional options of things you can do after adding to cart. And you can go ahead and choose which of the three things that I presented to you are a fit for your specific custom product page. And maybe you'll even think of something else that you want to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in right over here. And instead of showing the mini cart over here, I'm going to do something else. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the add to cart button. And that's in order to prevent the user from accidentally adding multiple products to the cart that they didn't intend to. I'm going to assume that once the user presses once on the add to cart button, that's the only time that they plan on clicking it for that specific page. Uh, and this change here can go in combination with opening the mini cart and in combination with the other thing I'm about to show you. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is that after we've updated the cart, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the add to cart button. And I'm just going to disable it. Okay, simple as that. And that will prevent the user from clicking on it again. 
And now what I'm going to do instead of opening the mini cart is I'm going to send the user to the cart page. Okay. And I'm going to do that by first of all, up here on top, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import Wix location front end from Wix location front end. Okay, so I'm importing uh, Wix location over here. And that is going to allow us to navigate essentially to whatever page we want. And after we go ahead and disable the add to cart button, I'm going to say Wix location front end dot two. And here we're going to navigate to cart page. So essentially, the functionality here is going to be once a user adds something to their cart, we're going to send them to the cart page. Okay, so it's like a not a mini cart, but a major cart. <laughs> so we're like really sending them to the cart. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to publish these changes. And then we can head over to the live site and see what that looks like. So here we are on the live site. And I'm going to go ahead and again, select two different options. And I'm going to put in a quantity. And let's try adding to cart. And we can see that boom, okay, so we navigated to the uh, cart page. Okay, so that's kind of what we expected. Um, but I realized here that there was a slight flaw in my logic from before. And instead of having the disable, okay, so here where we have add to cart uh, button dot disable. So I had put it after we've already updated the cart. But actually a better place to put it now that I actually saw how it behaved would be to put it even before we start trying to add it to cart. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move it up here. And I'm going to say that as soon as we start running this callback function, I'm going to disable the add to cart button. And I'm only going to enable it again here on the bottom if we hit an error. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say um, add to cart button dot enable. And my logic is, is that once somebody clicks on the button, while we're doing all of the back end processes and trying to figure out if it's actually adding to cart, we don't want them to click the button again. And the only chance that we do want them to click the button again is if for some reason there was a problem and we want to give them a chance to try again. So I think that this logic makes a little more sense than what I had tried to do before. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to publish this change. And let me show you what this looks like. Um, on the live site. So I'm going to head over here to the live site. And let's go back to our product page. And I'm even going to give it a little bit of a refresh to load the newest version of our site. And let's add in another product. And I'm going to click add to cart. And you can see now that it disables as soon as I click it. Uh, so that makes a little more sense. And then after we've already added it to the cart, we will go ahead and hopefully be redirected uh, to the cart page. I see that the URL redirected, but for some reason, there we go. The UI finally changed. Okay, so that is another option. Uh, you can also do other things you can add in, let's say a loader uh, to show something's happening, you know, while we're adding to cart, so they don't think, oh, no, the button's disabled, and there's a problem. Um, and you know, there's a lot of customizations that you can do, I can't cover everything. Uh, but hopefully I've kind of opened up uh, some different trains of thought that you can implement on your own uh, custom product page. And I will see you next time. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix and Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Again, I wanna give a special shout out to Aton from the WixWiz YouTube channel. This series would not be possible without him, so I'm really appreciative for him. But thank you again for watching and I will see you on the next one. Peace.